I want to get into the signal flow of this. So this mm -hmm. is this is pretty basic. You're seeing the whole signal flow here. Right. Acoustic in, acoustics enter this. They're amplified, I guess, by the horn, and then they cause a physical movement of the. What do you call it? A stylus or a cutting? Yeah, the stylus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So so it goes in, into the cutting head. Will hold the the diaphragm, and then attached to the diaphragm is the stylus. Cool. And then. Like you said, that required a lot of acoustic power mm -hmm. on this end to, to yield any sort of usable uh, signal on that end. This changed that. Not only this, but all of this as well. Yeah, so they would get uh, the microphone, uh, the cutting head, and then this rack. Uh, so this is kind of the beginning of our industry. Uh, this is the first like recording rack, so the, uh, the first ever microphone preamplifier. Uh, the first line amplifier, the first level meter, and the first monitor amplifier. And uh, so it was so important and influential, you know, a lot of things that we take for granted today, you know, come from this original rack from 1925. Um, so, so rack spacing, uh, the size of racks, um, patch bays, uh, the whole idea of, uh, you know, balanced cables, grounding schemes, it all comes from, from this original design. So it was, Bell Labs was essentially the phone company at the time, and so they kind of, kind of repurposed. So these were originally racks for the phone company. And so a lot of these amplifiers were also used for boosting long distance calls and uh, for, for radio and things like that. The, the equipment was so expensive to make, it, it was only leased at the time. And so every record sold, uh, they had to, uh, to pay a small amount to, uh, to AT&T and Western Electric.